Yo, what's good with y'all, man? So we back with another motherfucking video. So in this video, we finna react to Ariana Grande confronts Chin rumors with Ethan Slater. Hey, Amen. Before we get into this, bro, y'all know how these, like, how, how these people making them videos like this. You feel me? But we gonna come in with a with an open mind, not be biased whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? But let's get straight into it. Just straight fresh up. Yeah, feel me. I feel like we don't need to go into any specifics, but of course there's like an insatiable frustration, inexplicable, hellish feeling with watching people misunderstand the people you love. Her affair with Ethan Slater. Keep in mind that Ariana Grande, once upon a time, was married to Dalton Gomez. Ethan Slater was married to his high school sweetheart, Lily, and they actually had a child together right before Ariana Grande stole Ethan away. I mean, in my opinion, I feel like she was being unfaithful in her marriage. She was filming Wicked, her co-star was Ethan, and they fell in love on set, even despite their loved ones coming and visiting them while they were working and going out to uh, double date dinners together these two hit it off and decided to leave their old lives behind I, I, I when I listen to this album I feel like you're sharing yourself in a way that one you haven't done in a while and then two I feel like you're I feel like you're talking to people who feel like they, they know you but don't sure yeah I get what you're saying so it kind of seems like this album, Eternal Sunshine, which interesting because Ethan Slater, E.S., Eternal Sunshine, um, it's, you know, it's an album for her to address this controversy, to set the record straight. And I don't think this interview is necessarily helping her case. I love Zach saying he is so nice. I see him out in the clubs, always says hi to me, very friendly great guy love that he did this interview but i wish we got a little more detail i mean people in the comp i mean bro like at the same time we finna get part two on march 8th and at the same time bro like y'all always the people that always try to make the make the rumors about ari cheating on dalton there's also articles saying that dalton cheated on ari while they weren't with each other while she was in the uk and while he was back wherever he was you feel me so you always gotta have both both sides but as of right now in this one, they're just giving all the information that's on Ari about cheating on Dalton and Ethan Slater cheating on uh, or d like divorcing with his ex-wife. And I, I don't know if it's true or not, but I, I'm pretty sure they were going to divorce anyway before the whole Ari thing even happened. It's just that during that process, Ari was in, in the relationship already. When I first heard this, I ain't going to cap it, bro. When I first heard that she's with this bum. Bro, I was so pissed. It's whatever, man. Hey, man, we human. You feel me? Are happy. This person wrote, not her describing being a homewrecker as humanness. Another person wrote, what is she even saying? She was seeing a married man who left. I feel like hella people when they were saying that she's a homewrecker. As I said, bro, I'm I stay neutral to everything. You feel me? I'm not gonna be biased, no shit like that. But everyone, everyone knows. The articles about her cheating on Dalton, but no one talks about the articles that that were left out of con not not left out of context, but that were also that were also like counter arguments that Dalton was also cheating on Ari, and I don't think that just gets talked about enough because like everyone's just saying that it was Ari that was cheating, that was cheating, that was cheating, but we don't even know if, we don't know if which one, we don't even know which one's true to be honest with y'all. We we don't I I don't even know. You feel me? I just heard both sides that Dawn was cheating as well, and she. I don't know if she was cheating or if they were already divorced at that time. I don't know. His wife and newborn for her. This is on her just as much as it's on him. Now, Zach does ask her a little bit about how society has perceived her and her relationship, and how this album is kind of addressing that case. There is a sense of it's for my fans. There is a sense of this album where you're talking to people who have come to their own conclusions. What? People have crafted their own narratives. Yeah. The thing is, is that, like, we know this about the tabloids and about the media and about... Don't, like, am I crazy? Don't we know this? Yeah, but nobody... 
Nobody cares for the sake of a good story or for right. for curing one's boredom on the internet. I was about to say, bro, when I was watching, when we were watching React to this interview, this felt more serious. I don't know if I said my last video, but um, if you all didn't check it out, I want to check it out right there. Right, right there. Check it out right there. You feel me? But um, I was really, this this interview felt like it was more serious than compared to her past interviews where it was like more chill and just like chatting. Right, but that's what I'm saying. It's like we selectively remember that this is what the tabloids do to people, especially women. Ariana Grande kind of speaks differently. She doesn't seem like the same Ariana that we saw in past interviews, but we'll address that. I do want to mention that I don't really love this narrative of like the media is the bad guy because trust me guys, we know the media has been bad. We've seen what they've done to Britney Spears and other people, but we're not necessarily making up things here. It's all kind of like playing out in front of our eyes. So it's not really like the media is just going after you because you are a woman. This person commented the fact that she tried to pull the against women card and blame it on sexism is insane when she is the most anti-women woman ever. And honestly, guys, pay attention to the way that she's speaking in this next clip and the dialect, the vocabulary. While it does seem very enriched and elevated, it just doesn't seem like the Ariana that I know and it doesn't necessarily read as authentic. Based on whether or not we like the person. We selectively remember that. We selectively leave space for humanness, for nuance. Like, they don't leave space for that. Well, they do for their friends and their family. It's selective. Yeah. But, when they, but when they turn it off, when that aligns with the version of a person that they have in their head that they want to believe is true. Does that make sense? 100%. Yeah. But, but, but I don't say this for them. Again, I'm saying it for my fans, for myself. Is there anything you wish people knew? About what? Any of it? All of it? You? And of course, there's so much we want to know about. I'm gonna capture, bro. Like, I ain't the dumbest person, but bro, I did not understand what she was talking about, bro. Like, that, those last, like, those, those, those first few sentences, I don't know what she was talking about, bro. I'm gonna keep it a buck with y'all, bro. What the hell was she talking about? She was, <laughs> bro, it was just yapping. A relationship with Ethan. Like, were you guys having an affair when you were, you know, with your partners, when you were both married i mean how does that feel where are you guys right now in your relationship and i think that ariana has done a ton and i'm saying a ton of pr training not only probably for her music but for the wicked movie and she's been able to kind of reframe this situation to almost victimize herself <laughs> it's a two-handed rip <laughs> plenty we don't have enough time, but if you guys want to come to La Masseria one night, <laughs> please let me know. <laughs> We're going to get into all of it. <laughs> no, I I feel like we don't need to go into any specifics, but of course there's like an insatiable frustration, inexplicable, hellish feeling with watching people misunderstand the people you love and you and the anything. Now there's something you will notice throughout this video is that Ariana is not only using different vocabulary, but she changes the way that she speaks. She goes from talking like this to kind of talking like this and going a little bit higher, a little bit, you know, more mousy and airy. And then she goes down a little bit lower and then she speaks seriously, which I mean, you know, people flow with how they speak, but that's something that a lot of commenters noticed. This person commented her trying to gaslight the public and her selective Mickey Mouse voice in order to sound softer. Another person writes, she comes across as insecure. The way she constantly changes her style, public persona, and her voice depending on who she's dating. And while Ariana Grande doing this interview and kind of confronting the situation does bring it back to light and people are going to talk about it again, I don't really think we're going to get closure on what has really been happening until maybe we dissect these lyrics because Zach really alludes to the fact that this album is referring to the relationship and the scandal she's been involved in. That, uh, it's, uh, yeah, of course. It is, it's... Wait, so I'm so confused. So is Internal Sunshine based of this just this whole entire, like, allegation thing that's just going on right now? I thought it was going on, like, her whole entire childhood type shit. I, th I didn't know it was just about this, like, this one scandal that was going on. You feel me? But, yeah, I, I mean, referring but back to what, like, he was talking about, these people was talking about, her, her voice... I'm really confused too, you know. Some I've 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 seen people they be like it could it could be because of she was just she was just on Wicked and she has to like she tries to maybe lighten her voice because she was a princess. I don't know if that has if that makes any sense or correlates with the whole entire with any with the movie whatsoever. But as we've seen with some other actors, 
they really get into their role and they, tr they really try to play into their role and it usually affects how they are in person as well. But I don't know, I could just be making excuses, you feel me? But yeah. It's annoying, but I do feel like this album, why it's that? Oh God, I hope so. I, I don't really, think it does. I, really I think it does. I think it's the absolute worst idea. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Well, because pieces of it touch on things that are real, and then pieces of it are also just like a part of the concept. Yeah, part of the concept. So what is that separation? And it's so scary to leave it to up, leave it up to these selective memory people to decipher. It's scary. But I digress. Too late. The vinyls have been printed. <laughs> this person commented, "She's trying to sound so distinguished." <laughs> LOL. She said a whole lot of nothing. Another comment, me when I'm trying to reach the word count. Another person wrote this about Ariana. This isn't it. Babe, you can't gaslight us into thinking it was acceptable. And I do think she did say a whole lot of nothing with a bunch of different words. And people are starting to notice that this new character is emerging. And it does seem like, you know, celebrities go through their different waves. Like we've seen Lady Gaga and her Joanne and all these different phases. And Ariana seems to really fully adopt it in a lifestyle way. What she's trying to say is that if she were someone else, a lovable character, like a Taylor Swift, and I'm not a Taylor Swift fan, by the way, but maybe she wouldn't have received as much heat for what she did, which I don't think is true at all. She was saying that there's nuance. In other words, there's context or there's multi facets or there's many different versions or sides to this story. And just because the media puts one out doesn't make it the true one. But you really said a lot without saying anything. We've seen Ariana Grande before on Zack Singh's show, and she appeared differently, she sounded differently, she acted differently. And I just think it's important to remind you guys what I was used to seeing because seeing this interview really caught me off guard. Nah, I just want my kids to, like, discover it when they want to. I want my kids to f with me so much as a mom that they're like, yeah, my mom sings or whatever. For me, it was like a parody of, like, a 90s girl group vibe, but they loved it notice the little accent that she has when she says certain words like parody that she's never had before and i just want to know like when she's going to pick a character and stick with it like is this the final boss i wonder what the interviewer thinks about talking to the new oriana grande because he's used to interviewing oriana when she was in her shape-shifting era now your voice can change. My voice is not the same as it was five years ago, but there are certain things that seem drastically different about her. And it almost seems like performance art, which I think is why people are having a hard time resonating with Ariana because it doesn't necessarily read as genuine. So it's like, is this whole thing a performance, this relationship, and is she really just going through these phases? And I mean, I just, looking at her past, I can't imagine Ethan is gonna be around much longer after she gets over this era that she's in. But also, she did bring up the homewrecking rumors, quote unquote, and um, she said that it's unexplicably disgusting how people think I'm gonna get her back up. She also says, like, uh, the guy that put fantasize on TikTok is now going to jail so she doesn't like it when people steal things from her but she's over here stealing another man from a marriage Allegedly. let me know what you guys think. hey man bro now fuck that shit bro nah bro she did not cheat bro i got y'all gotta see both sides you feel me like all y'all like all y'all are just basically on the article side we don't even know for real bro we really don't know for real we don't know if she cheated or not you feel me but um, you know, as you said, your business is yours and mine is mine. <laughs> Type shit. Yeah, you know, we, but either way, bro, it's like no one like no one disregards like the other articles I've been going out about uh, on Don Gomez, and yeah, at the end of the day, bro, why are you even with Ian Slater, bro? <laughs> it makes no sense. It makes no sense. But anyway, back to the video, bro. A, a lot of these, I, a lot of these people, I can't tell if they're neutral or not. You feel me? Cause I'm really into media or like type of shit like that, but either way, it really doesn't matter because, uh, hella like there's like these like these people that are making these videos, these TikToks and putting these comments. You can tell like low key or high key that they just not fucking with Ari, bro. Like they just be hating on her and everything like that. Like y'all have y'all other see have seen other people like 
a lot of artists they go through their different phases like she's not the only one but since she's such on like the huge market and anything like that of course everyone's gonna hate like a hell of people are gonna hate on her and really like notice her the littlest things the littlest things that change about her and go off on it and you got other artists that do the same exact thing every artist goes through the same exact type of phase no one stays in their own phase Everyone goes through different phases. Even you and me, even people like that grow up, we all go through different phases. We're not always gonna be the same people. You feel me? Not but that's just me. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I wanted to update on this because Hey man. Eternal Sunshine is coming out in seven days. Um shout out to this video right here. You feel me? Um go go watch it and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.